back everyone to another redstone for dummies video and today we're going to be looking at 10 different redstone circuits that you are going to need for your redstone builds all right let's get started actually guys before i start this video i would like to just apologize it's been a while since i did a redstone for dummies video uh it's about been about actually two months and so i i am very sorry for this but i mean i've been doing i've been doing other redstone videos and this is just sort of it took me a while to come up with the idea for this video and well, I, I just hope you guys enjoy it, but I'm sorry for not, for slacking on the Redstone for Dummies videos a bit, but especially since it's such a huge gap, but hopefully you guys can forgive me, and let's just get started with this one. Alright, so at number one, we have the Redstone Clock. There are two types of Redstone Clocks, there are toggleable ones and non-toggleable ones. So first, I'm going to show you some, uh, 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 so first I'm going to show you a, a Redstone Clock that's non-toggleable. So basically, you click the button, to break it, and it goes into a clock. However, you can't turn it off. There's no way to turn it off. The only way to is to break this redstone right here, and then it'll eventually cycle through. And then to turn it back on, you either need to put a lever or a button, and then do that, and it will start it up again. To build this one, is very, it's pretty simple. It's just take f redstone blocks like this, take repeaters, piece of redstone dust, and take your lever like this, and that's it. And just to be keep in mind is that the more repeaters you add, the longer the um, the time between the pulses is. So for example, if I were to make a two repeater long thing like this, and now you have yourself a nice longer delay redstone clock. Alright, now I'm going to show you the next one. So what we have here is a hopper clock. So hopper clocks basically use, you take two hoppers and you put them up against each other and then that will give an output. It's a moderately fast clock. It's very helpful. And I'll just teach you quickly how to build it. So first what you want to do is you want to take a block that will be your input. You want to take your two hoppers. So first what you want to do is put one like this. Put that hopper into this hopper, and then take break that hopper and put this hopper into that hopper. Then you want to throw like one item into it, so I'll just throw a block of iron right now. And then what you want to do is you want to take a comparator out block, uh, a comparator output of that, and then that will be it. And you can connect that up to whatever input you want that to be. So this is an example of a very very fast redstone clock. It is extremely fast, and it's very easy to make just using a comparator. So as you can see, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the e the time between each pulse is a one pulse tick, meaning it's so fast that pistons will sticky pistons will spit out their blocks. All right, but you can you, you can connect this up to any other output, and just keep in mind that if I put took a repeater right there, it would it would not function. However, if I took a repeater over here, then it would function fine. All right. Next, what we have here is an is another one tick between each pulse redstone clock. It's toggleable as well, except this one makes a ton of noise because it's using redstone uh, torches and it takes up a little bit more space. And frankly, it's just more expensive. So unless you really just don't have quartz, I would see no reason to use this. And these these are this one's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is just compare it and just do what you see on the screen. This one I'll build it for you guys. It's very simple as well. So you just take two blocks. Put redstone torches on their front and their back. Oop, not not up there though. Then what we want to do is take redstone, put it on top, redstone in the middle, redstone in the front and in the back, and put your torch. I mean, uh, pff, sorry, put your lever there, and then put your output there. It doesn't matter which side the lever goes on, and it's a it's a pretty nice redstone clock, I guess. Though personally, I prefer the comparator. All right. Anyways, this is the last one and the most complex of the redstone clocks. As you can see, it looks a little intimidating. So what you do is you take how many items you want. So let's say, let's just put, uh, for the video's sake, we'll put 32. All right. And so 32 items in here. The more items you put into the hopper, the longer the time between pulses is. All right. Now let's turn this lever. And then what we have is it will empty out, and until then it will not give a redstone output. But as soon as it's finished emptying, which could take a while, hold up, <laughs> there, now it gives an output. And now it's going to do the same thing all over again. All I have to do is flip this lever, and it will continue to go until the redstone signal is off. So this is not fully toggleable, it's half toggleable. Um, I'm sure there's a more toggleable version, but to be honest, if you're having this m much time between um, pulses, you don't really need a fully to toggleable. Alright guys, so if you want to build this one, here's what you got to do. First, I mean, get it, take a good amount of space. Alright, put a lever. Then what you want to do is you want to do put take a hopper, 
put a hopper into that hopper, destroy that hopper, put another hopper there. Pretty simple. Comparator on both sides of the hoppers. What you want to do is put that into a block. Redstone dust here, redstone dust here. Take a normal piston and you want, oop, that's a sticky piston. Take a normal piston and you want to put that there, one there, one there. Put a redstone block in the middle and fill this with, with whatever items you want to. And then just let it go and it will do your, and then take your output from either one. It doesn't really matter which side you take it from. Just take it from this side, I guess, and you can just put your piston or whatever your output is right there. All right, so moving on from reds toggleable redstone clocks and non-toggleable redstone clocks, we have right here is the T flip-flop. All right, so this is the dropper T flip-flop design, dropper hopper T flip-flop design. And so basically what you do is you press this button and it does not give an output. Press this button again and it gives an output. So it turns a button output uh, input or a one tick pulse input into a stable output. All right, pretty cool. So to build this, what you have to do is first to put a dropper facing up, a dropper facing this way, a dropper facing into this dropper, and a hopper that faces just straight down. And then take your comparator output from this bottom dropper over here. So put your button here, and then put a block or just some sort of item inside the hopper. And then you'll have a you should have an output. Then you want to put put your output device there, and then you click it again and it will stay there. Click it again and then you have a redstone output. So the next flip-flop design is this one. It's a bit bigger and it's louder, but it's a, it's a nice design as well and it doesn't use droppers which can, some people find annoying or just they're a little bit more expensive, so I don't know. This is just this is the de design I use the most even though I don't like it that much. I don't know why. It's just the first one I learned. All right. So, the way to make this is take two blocks like this, you maybe take take your input device, take a repeater, take a take a piece of redstone dust. Then you want to do is you want to take two blocks like this, take redstone torches on both sides, so like so. Oh, not like that, not like that. Like this and like this. So you put your redstone torches there. Then what you want to do is you want to put a redstone block here. You want to put uh, a normal piston here and a normal piston here. And then what you want to do is you want to connect these two redstone torches up with the redstone. And then take your output from either this side or this or this side. Doesn't really matter. Just don't do it from both. And then take your output device, which in this case for me is going to be a piston. Then when you press the button, the exact same thing happens with the dropper. It's a little bit more noisy and it. It has a longer delay, but it works just fine. So now what we have is a fully tileable version of the T flip flop, and so the, well, tileable means that you can put it next to each other. And this version, you can definitely put it next to each other. So it releases the reds. It, so, so the first part of this is just a. The next. T flip flop design is fully tileable, and that means you can put it next to each other. So, for example, I'll just build it for you guys right here. You put a block here, button on its face. Actually, we'll make up a stone button so it looks a little better. Then, underneath here, you take a button, a uh, button, block of, <laughs> of iron. I don't know what's happening, guys, right now. Repeater set to one tick. Then, you want to take your sticky piston, put that there with a block on top of it. Then you want to put yourself a redstone repeater on this block so it looks like that. And then off of that, you want that repeater to go into a sticky piston with the redstone block. We'll put it right there. And then you want to take your output device, oh, not redstone comparator, your repeater right here, which will connect up to your output device, which for me is going to be, I don't know, let's make this double sticky pistons with iron blocks. All right. But to prove to you that's fully tileable, I will do that. And look how that goes down. And this one doesn't. This is probably a very good design. Unfortunately, this is probably like a very good design to use, especially if you're doing multiple things like this. The problem with this design, in my opinion, is that it's very long. Like, look how much space this takes up. Uh, these two designs are much better, especially this dropper one. So I would suggest using those unless if you really need it, the tileability. Okay, moving on from that, from T flip flops, we have a, a redstone circuit that gives out a one tick stable, a one tick pulse. So this is a rising edge monostable circuit. So what this means is that when I click the button, as as soon as the redstone gives an input, it will go up like this, 
and it doesn't wait until the it doesn't wait until the end of the button. There are falling edge mono stable circuits, but to be honest, I don't actually see the point of them. Like uh, this, these are much easier to build, and I would just I stick to using these. Maybe for more complex redstone creations, you would need that. But if you're watching my, but this is meant to be a a video for the more basic redstone. And so, guys, to build this, it's basically it's very simple. Also, this is designs very tileable, and literally, it's the exact same thing as this over here because this part is the thing that creates the mono, the one tick stable pulse, and then that will event that actually turns into a T flip flop if you add that part. So this basically just add an iron block, take a button, iron down here with a repeater set to one tick. You want to take your sticky piston, a block of iron. And by the way, guys, every single time I say block of iron, it could be any block. I just like the way iron looks. Iron, or for me, white concrete is also really nice. Then what you do is you want to take your another repeater set to one tick, and your sticky piston with a block of iron, which is just going to be my output device, but you can put any output. And then you end up with this. So that works perfectly. I'm just going to destroy this, so that way I can show you guys the next one. So this is a, a circuit that gives out two one-tick pulses. And it does one, and then it does a second one. And using the new observer block, it does this. All right? So like that. So you see the piston. You can actually you can just hook this up to whatever you really want to. I mean, I'll show you. It's very hard to see, though, so I just like to use the piston. And that's very easy to build. I'm not even going to teach you guys how to. It's a button with an observer. Alright. So now we're going to get into... Well, this is a very... This is, uh, somehow this is a redstone contraption. This is super simple. Almost as simple as this observer block over here. But it does something really easy and basic. So basically what this is... I don't know. I have a second lever up there. But basically what this is... It's an inverter. It takes a redstone signal. So for example, if I had this powered then it unpowers whatever the output is. So let's say the sticky piston with a block of iron, right? Let's say we unpower this, it will power. And if we power this, it will unpower. And basically, this is really simple. Just take a block with a redstone torch and then your output device. And you don't need this repeater. I'm just showing you that it's powered. You can just keep that lever right there. All right. Now we're going to get into pulse extenders. And pulse extenders are really, really, oops, oops, I, I broke it, I broke it. Pulse extenders are really, really helpful for extending either like a one tick stable pulse or just if you want to keep the pulse longer for like any old reason, like for a redstone clock, you can hook one of these up to a redstone clock. Very helpful. And anyway, this is a very simple design for a pulse extender. So basically, what you do is you click this button. And it will just keep going around and around and around. As you can see, the redstone's getting a little bit more dim, and that turns off. So to make this, it's really, really, really simple. It's one of the most simple designs ever. <laughs> just take a comparator, comparator here, facing the opposite direction. Double redstone, redstone here. Make sure you the comparator is facing the block. And then you can take your output from here if you want, or from here. Either of these work. And your input can go either here, here, or here. Or here, I guess. Anywhere around here. Anywhere where there's redstone or on the block. And now you can keep adding more uh, comparators, and that will make it a longer pulse. So if I do this, as you can see, the pulse can get really, really long. As opposed to this, it's still going, guys. As opposed to this, which dies out much quicker. It still beat this one. All right. So... Now, that this is a different, slightly different design, because comparators, like even this, sometimes is a little bit way too long, or it's, too, yeah, it's usually, because like that could be very long if you're trying to just make a simple like piston door. So what you would do is you would do something like this, which is, and so the way this works is that this button is powering this block, which is powering all of this redstone, which it's also going through the repeater. And the redstone, it will unpower almost instantly, except that this is powering this block, which power repowers the redstone, keeping it powered for a little extra time. So like that. And the way to make this last longer is just to add more repeaters. So I'm going to quickly show you guys how to build it. It's pretty very simple. So you take your iron block, take a repeater, set to four ticks, or less if you want it less extended, then put a button here, and then put your redstone on the side. And, oops, as I said earlier, you can extend this as much as you want, though this is used for like slightly, a little bit longer pulse extensions. Like that. 
All right, now we're going to get into some, log lo some logic circuits, just a couple. I personally don't really like logic circuits. They, they mess my brain up, brain up, but I tend to go with the simpler stuff. But this is they're very helpful, that, and you guys should probably know them. Anyways, so this is the AND gate. So basically, the AND gate works by... It mean basically is is that if you you have two inputs or two plus inputs, and if you just if you turn one of them off, nothing happens. You need both of them off, or all three of them, or all four of them, depending on how many inputs you have for the for there to be a red uh, redstone output. And so it's very simple to build. So basically, what you do is just put three iron blocks here, redstone torch there, redstone torch there, connect it up with redstone in the middle, put lever there, lever there. Then what you want to do is you want to take your redstone torch in the back and then put that to your output device. So for me, a sticky piston, and voila. All right. So the next redstone circuit we have, alright guys, so here we have one of the most, in my opinion, one of the more complex logic circuits. It messes with my brain, at least it used to. I'm starting to understand it now, but sort of like kind of not really at times. It's a bit tricky, but it can be very helpful for some for specific uh, redstone contraptions. Alright, so this is the RS NOR latch. Hard to say, <laughs> a little bit, but uh, so anyway, so basically what it does is it has two inputs, and basically what happens is if you click this one, nothing happens, right, because it's already extended. You have to go to the input number two, click it, and it will toggle the uh, the output. And so it's very similar to the uh, T flip-flop, except it uses two inputs instead of one. So, yeah, it's a bit weird that way. And so to build this, you basically just take your block of choice here, iron block for me, put a button there, put redstone there, redstone dust there, you want to put a block there, you want to put your redstone torch there, and repeat the same thing on the other side, so you have something that looks like this, and make sure to put your button here, so then, and that changes the redstone signal here, and you can take your outputs from the, the, any of these two blocks, or any of these two blocks, or even from the redstone torch itself. Alright, so next, and Next, we have the double piston extension extender. So this is one of the most used and very common circuits that you'll see. It's not a logic circuit, but uh, it's very, very, very useful. So this is one of the most simple designs for one, and my the one I use. And it's basically like this. It extends both pistons and pushes out the block, and then... It, it retracts both pistons and retracts the block. It's it's very interesting the way it works based on the repeater designs. You have a repeater set to two and sets it to four ticks. Alright, I'm gonna quickly show you guys how to build it. It's not very complicated. Two sticky pistons, block of choice, repeaters, redstone, connect that up. Repeater set to two ticks, repeater set to four ticks. Alright? And then you can place your input wherever you want. You can put it here, here, here. Alright, I'm just gonna throw it here. And actually you can't put it here, but you can put it like right here. And as you can see, perfect. So it's very helpful. And in fact, I I have been messing around with piston extenders extenders for a very long time. And I even have a piston extender that can extend up to like eight blocks or something like that. It's crazy. But so Piston extenders are really fun. Everyone has their own design. This is like the most common and simple design because I mean it's redstone for dummies, guys. I don't want to give you the most complicated design ever. In fact, the most complicated redstone circuit here is probably the first, uh, the first redstone clock I showed you guys. But anyways, let's take a look at the final circuit. So this circuit is extremely helpful for things like automatic tree farms, for cobble generators, and things like that. And for automatic walls, it's it's a it's an amazing. Or even for things like making um mel automatic melon farms and stuff like that, it can be. It's an amazing design. Um, <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. So, anyways, <laughs> enough talk with me. Let me just show you what it is. Put a block here, goes there, and you can keep putting blocks up until the piston limit, which it just happened. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and thirteen. So, <laughs> and 13. So, the, p the push limit's 12, so it can go up to 12 blocks, but if you can have other pistons that will help it out sometime in the future, or things like that, and it can technically go forever. And if you're doing, like, clearing out a monument or something like that, you can just keep pushing the sand, and it, as you can see, it'll just fill in the entire area.
like that. And now I have to break all this, but <laughs> it will keep going until it eventually, uh, I mean, it will eventually, the build, it'll hit the piston push limit. But this is a very cool design. Alright, let me just show you guys how to build it. By the way, this, so it's very simple. You want to just put your block like that and your block here. That's for all. All is for blocks. You don't even need this block. All right. <laughs> if you're if you're really like low on blocks for some reason, take your sticky piston. Oh, sorry, not just sticky piston. I don't know. I have a sticky piston. Take your normal piston and throw that right there. And then what we want to do is put a redstone torch underneath it, and then a piece of redstone. So, all right. So let me show you guys how this works. So I have an obsidian block here, just so that way I can show you guys. I don't know how I got ice bucket challenge. That doesn't really make sense. But anyways, so basically when you put a block here. Here's what happens. This redstone torch is powering this block right here, which is powering this re piece of redstone dust, which, which is powering this block, which is powering the piston. That all happens super duper quickly within one tick. So therefore, it gives out a one tick pulse because immediately the piston will fire, stopping that from stopping the torch from powering the block from <laughs> powering the redstone. I mean, the redstone gets power for like a second, and then it goes. Well, it's actually a quarter of a second or something like that. It's, it's a it's like a red, it's one redstone tick, so I don't know. And then if you go like that, of course nothing's going to happen because of the bud. But just update it, update that block, and then things will be good. And you just keep going. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment down in the comment section below telling me you like, like this video and telling me to do more redstone for dummies. And I will definitely do more Redstone for Dummies. And anyways, as, 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 and as always, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos. This has been Daddy's of Hacks with another Redstone video. And Daddy's out.